says, the reason why, he says, you shall always have the poor with you. But he says, the son of man, you will not always have with you. And the Bible lets us know the very next day he saddled up on a donkey, had gone into Jerusalem. And if you allow for me to use some gestures as they waited in crowds on the left side and the right side and the front and in the back. And they were excited that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem because they chanted, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. But I'm here to tell you on this visit to Jerusalem, it was not like the same as those of the past visits. This time when Jesus had gone to Jerusalem, the chants were not Hosanna, Hosanna, but they were crucified, crucified him. Instead of blessed is the king, instead it was a sign of mockery, this is the king of the Jews. Instead of riding on a donkey, it was all about carrying a cross. Instead of palm trees, it was about the tree at Calvary. Instead of the circumcision, it was about the crucifixion. Instead of the eighth, eighth day, it was all about what he was going to do on the third day. This visit was not the same as the previous visits. Jesus says, I must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things. He would suffer like no other, in which the Bible lets us know that I know that the apostles would say, they would brag, Lord, I suffered for you. Remember the Bible lets us know in Acts, they rejoiced that they were counted worthy to suffer shame in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Bible also lets us know that Ananias, who he was said, had said to, uh, to do something for a man by the name of Saul, and Ananias I know being a good man and I know he says Lord I'm not questioning you using some gestures he, he said I know that I'm not questioning you but do you know who this man Saul is and the Bible will let us know he says that he you this man is a chosen vessel unto me that he's going to suffer many things and Paul would say yes I did suffer for the Lord Paul would say look at my resume Paul would say that I was five times before the soldiers, and he says that I was received 40 stripes minus one. If you do the math, Paul says that I received 195 lashes. Paul would say, look at my resume, that I was beaten with a rod three times. He would say, look at my resume, I was stoned and left for dead. He would say, look at my resume, I was shipwrecked, I was snake bitten, I was in the midst of strangers and false brothers. Paul would say, look at my resume. He would say that I suffer, but I'm here to tell you it was Paul that the one that said in Philippians chapter 3 and verses 10, he says that I may know Christ. Amen. He says I want to know the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. It was Paul that said that I want to know about Jesus. Amen. He says you think that I had gone through something, but he says Jesus is the one that had gone through something. Amen. See, when we look at the Bible... The Bible lets us know that the wounds and the stripes of Paul cannot be compared to Christ. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible lets us know in Isaiah chapter 53, the Bible says, For he was wounded for our transgressions. The Bible says he was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And not because of the stripes of Paul, not because of the stripes of any other of the disciples, but the Bible says because of the stripes of Jesus is the reason why that you and I are healed Amen. on today. Amen. When we look here, Jesus makes a prediction that no man has ever made. Jesus said that I'm gonna suffer. Many of us in here, we can make the prediction that we're gonna suffer. Many of us, Jesus made the prediction that, uh, that he's going to be healed. Many of us can make the prediction that we're going to die. But Jesus made a prediction that no man was able to make him. Abraham Lincoln, for you historians, he had a dream that he was going to be assassinated. And the historians, they write and they tell us two weeks later from his dream, guess what happened to him? He was assassinated. For you book readers, Mark Twain, the writer, he was born during the Haley's Comet. And the historians let us know that he made a prediction 
that when, the, when he grew old and he was sick, he says it would be a shame that I didn't go out doing Haley's Comet. And the Bible and the story, the historians, the history books let us know approximately 24 hours after Haley's Comet had come down, it lets us know that he had died. But see the prediction that Jesus made. You and I can make the prediction that we're going to die because the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 9 and verses 23, 27, it's once appointed for man to die. But the Bible lets us know here that Jesus made the prediction that I'm going to suffer. I'm going to be killed. And he says the prediction that no man can make, he says I'm going to be resurrected mm -hmm. on that third day. Amen. When we get and we look at it and see what did Jesus suffer from? Jesus did not only suffer from the chief, pri the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Jesus did not suffer from the outside. And just to let us know, we know that sometimes the enemy is not always on the outside. Mm -hmm. The enemy is sometimes within. Am I right about it? Yeah. The enemies are sometimes of the one that is closest to you. For the psalmist tells us here in Psalms 41 and 9, the psalmist says, he says that he, we ate together. Mm -hmm. He says he was my familiar friend. We broke bread. He knew my friends. But the Bible says, yet he kicked his heels up against me. Mm -hmm. When we look at here, Jesus suffered from, when we look at, he suffered from treachery, which is betrayal. He suffered from betrayal. Judas, Jesus would say, you knew my family. Mm -hmm. Jesus would say, you was a part of this 12 men fraternity. Jesus would say, I trusted you with a money bag. Jesus would say that you greeted me not with a holy kiss, but instead that you greeted me with the kiss of betrayal. Jesus gave the intel, the intel from within, it came out. When we look at Matthew chapter 16, what did Jesus, Judas tell? Judas told in Matthew chapter 16 and verses 20, what does it say? The Bible says here in Matthew chapter 16 and verses 20, the Bible says, then Jesus uh, charged his disciples that they would, should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. He says, tell no man that I am Jesus the Christ. When we go back to Matthew chapter 16 and verses 13, if you will, the Bible tells us here in Matthew chapter 16 and verses 13, the Bible says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, and he asked his disciples, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they gave and said, some, John the Baptist, Elias, Jeremiah, or the other prophets. But then he said unto them, whom do you say that I am? And Simon Peter stood up and said that thou art, notice that he doesn't say Jesus. Notice he doesn't say that you are Jesus. The reason why Jesus was a common name. Jesus was a common name. If you go to me, Brother Deutsch, in Acts chapter 7, verses 45, Jesus was a common name just like Simon was. Mm -hmm. When we know Simon, uh, uh, Simon Peter, right? And the Bible lets us know that usually when there was a when there was a name that was common, there was a title that was given to it. You remember Simon, uh, Simon Peter, he stayed at whose house? Simon the Tanner, right? When you know who the, uh, what a Tanner was, the Jews looked at them as being an unclean profession or an occupation they took care of the hide then we look at Simon the sorcerer when, when we think of Simon the sorcerer what do we think of we think of trickery we think of Simon the leper we think of Simon the person who had leprosy we think of Simon of Cyrene who was he he was Simon of Cyrene he was the person that assisted in Jesus in carrying the cross but here he says here mm -hmm. he says that you are Jesus he says do not tell you men that I am Jesus the Christ when we look at in Acts chapter 7 and verses 45, mm -hmm. just, just let us know that it is a common name. What does the Bible read there? Which also our fathers that came. Uh-huh. After brought to with Jesus. Uh-huh. And Jesus. Go ahead. Uh-huh. And to the where? Of the, of the Gentiles. All right. Now, when you read this, you'll be like, Jesus. You'll be like, how did you? This is when Stephen was preaching this message. See, he, when he says Jesus, here, it is not Jesus Christ mm -hmm. letting you know the common name. But Jesus here is Joshua Amen. because it was Joshua that had taken them to the land of the Canaanites, which was the land of milk and honey, which God had promised them. So Jesus was a common name. But
but he says, tell no man that I am Jesus, the Christos. Mm -hmm. Let let nobody, don't tell no one that I am Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one that came from above in which the Jews were waiting for. Do you remember that occasion? When the demons, one time, the the, the demons even said what what, 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 what Peter said right here. And then when one time when they, when they had seen what Jesus had done, and then the demons came upon them. And the Bible, Luke chapter, Luke chapter 4, I believe it is, and they said that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Even the demons recognized that he was the Christos, the Messiah that had come from above. And the Bible says that they rebuked him. Yes, they rebuked the demons. He rebuked the demons that they would not share this information any longer. So it was the entail. That was given, that had gotten on out. It was revealed when we look at Matthew chapter 26 and verses 14. Matthew chapter 26 and verses 14. When we look at here, the Bible says, Then one of the twelve, mm-hmm. twelve called Judas, right? <coughs> one of the twelve called Judas is carrying, went unto the chief priest. Mm-hmm. And what did he do? And he says, What will you give me? And I will deliver him, Jesus the Christ, unto you. And they had come to an agreement of 30 pieces of silver. We also look at Jesus in his last days. He suffered Mm -hmm. from anxiety. He had anxiety in his last days because the Bible lets us know that he was exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Mm -hmm. Sweat as if it were great, great drops of blood, prayed three times, and the disciples see him visibly upset. Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. His disciples looking at Jesus, and Jesus is not acting the way that he normally acted. Mm -hmm. Jesus is always calm, cool, and collected. When we look at his disciples looking uh, looking at Jesus, Looking at how he was di- how he was acting different in his last name days, they would look at Jesus because it was Jesus that calm that, that calm that, that was the calm for his disciples during the storm at the sea. It was Jesus that was calm during the immense crowd asking for food. It was Jesus that was calm when two sisters lost their grieving brother. It was Jesus that was calm when dealing with demons named Legion. And now it meant to be showing to be greatly distressed here. Mm -hmm. Jesus was thinking about his final hours. See, then he goes to Gethsemane. Goes to Gethsemane for a place for solitude. A place where he underwent his mighty agony. The name signifies torqueless or lay out, mm-hmm. which is an olive meal or a wine press. Heavy slabs of stone lowered to crush the olives. And the oil ran down into a pit. And what a proper place. What a proper place for such a thing. At the foot of Mount Olives, there it pleased the Lord to bruise him. There it pleased the Lord to crush him, that the fresh oil might flow to all believers from him, Mm -hmm. that we may be partakers of the root and the fatness of the good olive. Christ petitions to his father in Matthew chapter 26 and 42. He says, let this cup pass for me. Let this cup pass for me. When Jesus said, let this cup pass, Pass for me. It was not that cup in which David cup that runneth over. When Jesus says, let this cup pass for me, it was not Nehemiah's cup that he had held for the king. It wasn't that type of cup. When he talked about this cup pass for me, it was not the cup that holds a cold cup of water that if you give in the Lord's name. Not that type of cup. Mm-hmm. It was not the cup in which the Bible tells us in the one that he had given to his disciples. A cup that he gave to his disciples and he said, take, eat, and drink this. It was not that type of cup. Mm-hmm. This was a special cup that was only designed for the Lord. Mm-hmm. Only designed for the Lord and the Lord put it before him. We know that James received the same type of cup, am I right about it? But the cup did not have the same effect. When James was killed there by Herod the first, he told him that you indeed you're gonna drink of this cup. Indeed you're gonna baptize in this manner, but the cup that they had that was not gonna have the same impact of the cup of our savior, Jesus Christ. It did not consist of gold as the different kings, King Nebuchadnezzar 
in them as they had in theirs. Mm -hmm. It did not consist of the Lord's Supper in which we partake of, in the taking of the bread and the cup. It was the cup of his suffering and death at Calvary's cross. Yes. And the reason why we think of his suffering, his agony and dying upon Calvary's cross, the cup of dying, mm -hmm. that means that when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we need to remember the cup that Amen. he shared for you and I. Amen. Amen. When we partake of our cup, Amen. how many of us, when the when we pass the communion down, how many mm -hmm. do we blot everything out? Mm -hmm. And we remember as we partake of that cup, Amen. Lord, I remember your cup, Amen. what you have done for me and what you have done for, for everyone, male and females, what you have done for everyone. We need to be thankful for him. Amen. Jesus suffered from humiliation. The Bible lets us know, well, when we look here, he was humiliated in many fashions. They show a loincloth under the Jewish law. When we look at our pictures, they show a portrayal of Jesus uh, being on a loincloth. Let's see, get this working here, brother. Okay. All right, there we go. Get them. See, they suffer, he suffered humiliation. Mm -hmm. When we look at our pictures, we see up on the cross. We see a picture of Jesus in a, in a loincloth. Mm -hmm. But the Bible tells us that he suffered like no man did. He suffered like no man. And I just want to cause for us to think here a little bit. See, they show a loincloth of Jesus. And under the Jewish law, men condemned to being stoned, mm -hmm. they were permitted to wear a loincloth. But I wonder if they really practiced this. I wonder if they really practiced this on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because the Bible tells us that he suffered like no man. Mm -hmm. If you will, let us go to Acts chapter 18 here real quick. Acts chapter 18. You have to realize that the Jews, the Romans, they had little regard for the Jews. Mm -hmm. They had little regard for the Jews. Mm -hmm. When we look at Acts chapter 18, and we're going to look here at verses 12, and we're just going to give an example. And when we look at here, and the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 12, uh, Acts chapter 18, should I say, and verses 12, and it reads, and when Gallio, he was the deputy of Achaia, and which is the province of Rome. Mm -hmm. And he was of the Rome, that was the Rome, uh, the, the province of Rome. Go ahead, he was the deputy. Jews and insurrection uh -huh. with one, one accord against Paul, against Paul. And, brought him to the judgment seat. and they had a problem with him they said Paul we got a problem with you uh -huh. he said what you're doing is that, that, that the Jews brought him there they said that uh, you, you're worshiping the Lord different not according to the law verses to, verse to the next verse saying and this fellow persuasive men, men to worship God contrary to the law uh huh go ahead and when Paul was now about to open the, uh, his mouth, uh -huh. Galileo said unto the Jews, uh -huh. If it were a matter of wrong uh -huh. and wicked lewdness, mm -hmm. O ye Jews, mm -hmm. reason would that I should bear with you. Uh -huh. But if it be a question of words and names and of your law, mm -hmm. look ye to it, mm -hmm. for I will be no judge of such matters. Right. Basically, he was saying, I don't care nothing with your laws. <laughs> I don't care nothing about your religion. He says, y'all fix it. Mm -hmm. But if it's a problem with the Romans, our laws, he says, I'll settle it. Mm -hmm. And this was the demeanor that he had about it. Read on, if you will. And he drained, he, he threw him out the judgment seat. Not only did he throw him out the judgment seat, go ahead. Then all the Greeks, then all the, Greeks the, uh -huh, the chief ruler of the synagogue, guess what he did? And beat him they beat the him. Seat. And guess what? He didn't even care at all. Mm -hmm. Just giving you some background here. Mm -hmm. Of what they really, if they really cared about the Jews. Mm -hmm. So this is Jesus in which I'm given to getting into. When we look at Jesus here, the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 27 and verses 35. Matthew chapter 27 and verses 35. I wonder if Jesus was fully clothed. Mm -hmm. My question is... I wonder if Jesus was fully clothed in Matthew chapter 27 and verses 35. The Bible says, and they crucified him 
and they parted his what? Garments. Garments, plural. Three articles in which they wore. The Bible says they removed his garments, plural. They removed his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. Amen. They stripped him. So my question is, food for thought, why would they treat the other people the same as they treated Jesus when the Bible says that Jesus suffered more than any other man? Why would they go through the same thing? Just for something to think about. Mm -hmm. The Bible lets us know that Jesus was supposed to experience a type of death that was different from others. Right. His suffering and his death was unordinary. It was extraordinary. It was not going to be like any other. Mm -hmm. When we look at these portrays, these are not a portray of Jesus. People are making millions of dollars. When people make these portrays, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong to have it in, in your home, but somebody didn't read their Bible when they made a portray of Jesus. Mm -hmm. right. Somebody didn't read their Bible. You wouldn't want a real picture to decor your walls in your house. Mm -hmm. People will come in and they say, what is that? Mm -hmm. That's the suffering that he had done for me. Mm -hmm. The Bible lets us know when we look at these pictures, Jesus, he did not come up Calvary's hill like that. Mm -hmm. When we look at there, we see the picture of him. That is not a picture of Jesus. Mm -hmm. The one thing that they might have gotten right closest is maybe his face. Mm -hmm. And I'm being sarcastic about that. Mm -hmm. Because when we look at everything else, the elements, this is not a picture of Jesus. Mm -hmm. When we go here to Isaiah chapter 52, if you will, to get some background on what the word says about Jesus. Yeah. This lets me know that somebody didn't read their Bible prior to drawing, <laughs> making millions of dollars, hundreds and thousands of dollars. But that's not a picture of Jesus. Amen. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 52 and 13, the Bible says what? Behold my, Behold my servant shall what? Deal prudently. He shall be what? And extolled. And, and, and be very high. Go ahead. As many were astounded at thee. Mm -hmm. His his visage was so, his marred, visage was so marred, more than any man, more than any man, and his form more, and his form more, than, more than, than the sons of men. Mm -hmm. That doesn't look like Jesus to me. Mm -hmm. Somebody didn't read their Bible. Amen. When we go to Isaiah fifty and verses six, Isaiah fifty and verses six, it reads here in Isaiah fifty and six. He says what? I gave mm -hmm. my back to the smithers and my what? And my, and my cheeks to them that what? pluck off, off the hair. Mm -hmm. I hid not, not my face from shame and spit. Mm -hmm. That doesn't look like a picture of Jesus to me. Amen. According to the prophets and according to Isaiah, when we read it here, when we look at here, Jesus was scourged. He was scourged. And what it was, it was a, a, a flagellum mm -hmm. in which that it had, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a whip mm -hmm. that consisted of different straps around it and it consisted of metal and mm -hmm. iron and bones. Mm -hmm. And when they took a lash, mm -hmm. guess what came off? Mm -hmm. It's some flesh came off. Am I right about it? I didn't see in these other pictures. It was a nice little lash right there. Am I right about it? But the Bible says he gave his back. Sad. Am I right about it? He gave his back. See, when we see here what it did, it pulled their flesh. Pulled it out. I wonder how many you received. Deuteronomy 25 and 3. The Bible says 39, 40 minus 30, 40, 40 minus 1. But remember what we brought out. We don't know what the Jews, when we do this here, when about far as we say, we bring that point out far as when the Jews, uh, when it's his beating, but far as when it's his clothing and everything else, we, 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 we don't take that in consideration. Mm -hmm. But Jesus suffered. Amen. He was humiliated yes, more than any other person. Amen. So we see this here. It consisted of that. And the Roman government, mm -hmm. they would beat him. Mm -hmm. Different types of forms, one with cords. And then when we see here, uh, uh, another well, there was another picture that I had on here. It didn't have, it didn't, it didn't come, but that's all right. When we see here, the Bible lets us know, or when we look, 
there was nails that was driven through his feet. Mm -hmm. And you had to really see the picture that see how it was is that their feet were together and they had to lift up. Mm -hmm. Have somebody you've been on the side of something and you lift it up on some board? But what they did, they had to lift up. Am I right about mm -hmm. Three nails. Mm -hmm. Not no nails, mm -hmm. but some stakes. Three nails, not your, not your little nail that you got at home. Not your little nails that you build your house with. Not your nails. Can we imagine? Can we imagine this being driven through you, Brother Deutsch? Can you imagine this the whole day? You, you can take it anywhere to remember Jesus. Brother, 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 brother Smith. This is what was used, not the, the exact, but just to use it. It had to be something strong. Yes, to hold it, it was just not some ordinary carpenter nail. Can you imagine this being driven oh. through your hands, being driven through your feet? Jesus suffered there on Calvary's cross. Oh, when we look at here, as we hurry up to bring this to a conclusion, mm -hmm. the Bible tells, if you will, go to Luke chapter 23 and verses 48. Luke chapter 23 and verses 48. The Bible lets us know that there was a subscription that was written upon them. Written up there upon the cross involving the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 23 and verses 38. The Bible tells us here. It tells us here and a superscription. It says also was what? Written over him in the letters of Greek. He wanted to make sure that the Grecians understood it. Greeks, the Grecians, Greek-speaking Jews. He says also here, it says those that were Latin, in yes. Latin, yes. and in Hebrews, those yes. that spoke Aramaic. Yes, sir. And it was a subscription, and this is called a titulus. Basically, it was a sign that hung upon the cross. Yes. That it told the crime of the person yes. that was being sentenced to death. Yes. It told of the crime that they committed while they were being sentenced to death. Yes. But you notice that Jesus was not charged of any crime. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why he is said they could not find no fault in Jesus. Am I right about it? That's why the only thing that they could hide, they could put upon his cross, is that this is the king of Jews because there was no fault found in Jesus. Mm -hmm. But they put the sign there to show Yes. That this is the king of Jesus. Yes. The other ones that told who they were, what they did. They wanted the world at that time to know who he was. See, when we look here, we talk about the components on his head. Talk about the thorn being on his head. We talk about his side being pierced. We talk about his hands and we talked about his feet. But don't forget about who was on his shoulders. Who was on his shoulders? Yes, sir. The nail. One nail in the left hand. One nail in the right hand. A nail driven in his feet. A side pierced in his back dismantled. We talk about all of that, but I want to ask you the question. We don't talk about his shoulders. Right. Who was on his shoulders? Right. When we go to Isaiah chapter 9. And verses 6, the Bible said a child is born. Guess what? A son is given. Am I right about it? And the government shall be upon his shoulders. Don't you know that you and I, each and every one of us, were on his shoulders while his hands was being pierced and his side was being pierced and his hands driven with nails and the thorn and the spit and the mockery that came upon him. Jesus had put us upon the shoulders took it to Calvary, died there on Calvary yeah. for you and I. Yeah. I thank you, Lord, for what you have done. His suffering, why did he do it as I close here? Mm -hmm. In the next two minutes, am I right? Yes, am I okay? Sir. In the next two minutes, why did you do it for us, Jesus? He did it because of greater love. Yeah. Anybody know about greater love? Yeah. <laughs> See, we just, we, 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 with the love that we have here, we don't know nothing about that. But the Bible says Jesus did it because greater love he has, right? Yeah. Greater love 
have no friend. Am I right about it? Then this man, Jesus, who laid down his life for you and I, he did it because it was greater love. Yes. He did it because of John chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so agape the world, am I right about it? That he gave his monogenies, his one and of only kind. Am I right about it? The one and of, of an only kind. He gave his son for you and for me. I thank him for his suffering. We need to recall and we need to remember. We can reflect back and we can think about people that we have lost and how they suffered. Oh, they suffered. My grandmother suffered from pancreas cancer. And we go on in the list. Oh, they suffered. But don't forget about the suffering that Jesus Christ had done for you. And I, I thank him. I thank him that he bore that heavy cross up to Calvary's lonely hill to a place called Golgotha. His father's wish that he must fulfill. It was on a Friday morning. Where it was on an early morning, should I say, where they hung him there to die. With a sword they pierced his tender side and a drink of water was denied. They gambled at his feet and his robe they would possess for those who knew him well and the sinners that he still blessed them. But it did not take long that day for the agony of my Lord to cease him. For his father had called him at last and now he was at peace. Three days and three nights there in the grave he laid so God had chose. But up come early one morning, my Jesus had arose. He arose of victors from the dark domain and he lives forever with his saints to reign. It's because he lives or fear is gone. And the reason why we can face tomorrow, I thank Jesus for what, is all, what all he's done for us. That's all that I have for you this evening. I hope and pray that the things that we've said will just cause us to reflect. When the Lord suffer, supper yeah. goes around. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Partake in the cup. Amen. Blot everything out. Amen. I remember your cup, Lord, for what you have done for me. Amen. At this time, that is the conclusion, and we would like to, I'd like to thank you for your attention Amen. and your patience with me. And at this time, we want to turn the program back over to uh, brother, uh, brother Kevin uh, Berry.